Happy Sabbath. Shabbat Shalom. Happy Sabbath. Happy feasting. We're in the feast season. Praise God in Jesus' holy name. Yeah. How's everybody doing today? I know some of us were up late last night cooking and whatnot. And some of us were up early this morning and, and cooking. And we were in the Word late last night. We were in the Word early this morning. What a wonderful time, these summer feasts. Kicking off the feast year. We're going to get started with a, a short a little lesson, if you will, on unleavened bread. Not so much on unleavened bread, but on being unleavened. But first, let's go ahead and open up. We'll face the temple in Jerusalem and we'll ask Lord for guidance. Heavenly Father, great God of Israel, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this, this opportunity to gather, Lord. Father, we just ask that you edify us and that you open our eyes and our ears. And give us what we need to be pleasing in your sight, Father. Father, we thank you for these blessings and all blessings in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus, in whom shall be glorified forever. Amen. Once again, welcome to Philadelphia Assembly, sisters and brothers. The title of this lesson is Be Ye Unleavened. Be Ye Unleavened. And I'm not going to go real long at all. And I know I say that all the time, but I'm really not. We have a, a handful of scriptures. We all now know why we're gathered here today. It's the Feast of Unleavened Bread. We know what unleavened bread is all about. It's to put sin far from us. And that's the whole purpose for unleavened bread, is to remind us to be blameless before God. That's what unleavened bread is all about, to remind us to keep away from sin. So leading into the Passover that we celebrated Sabbath Eve, actually, it was Friday evening, we celebrated the Lord's Supper, and we partook in the Passover according to the ordinance that Jesus gave us. He changed the ordinance from the lamb and roasting it with the pertinence and everything, and he changed it to the bread and the wine. He changed the ordinance, but not the law. And Brother Bob did a real good uh, lesson on that. And we went and we repented. We took a look at ourselves. We put the mirror up in front of us before we came to the Passover so we wouldn't be eating that bread and drinking that wine, the body and blood of our Messiah, unworthily. And we repented from the things that we could see. And we asked God to prove our hearts the rest of the way into the season. So then we took the Passover. And now we're in the first day of unleavened bread. That God commands us to keep a holy convocation. And it's a high Sabbath day. It's a high Sabbath day. It's the same day that in one of the Gospels, the body of Christ had to come off the cross when he died on the Passover. Because the next day was the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The body had to come off the cross. It had to come off the cross because it was the feast and because any body left hanging on a tree overnight would defile the land. But this is all for another time, sisters and brothers. Right now we are at the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the first day. And what this is about now, we've taken a look at ourselves. We've gotten into the Passover. We've gotten into the feast season. We've looked in the mirror. We've taken corrective measures. We've asked for forgiveness where we see we've needed it. We've made things right with the sisters and brothers around us where we've had awe. We have came into the feast. Now we're unleavened. We're without sin because we've taken a good look at ourselves and we've been painstaking about this. We didn't just go into this half-hearted. Our desire is to walk perfect before God and be pleasing in His sight. So now that we are unleavened or without sin, to the best of our ability, keeping the feast without malice, okay, without the, un, without the leavening of sin, how do we stay unleavened now? Not only now during the rest of the feast, but as we carry on from here and we move forward after the feast. So let's start this off in Matthew, the 16th chapter. Matthew, the 16th chapter. And the title of this again is Be Ye Unleavened. Matthew 16, <clears throat> Brother Jeremy, start us off uh, in verse 1, please. 16 and 1, go ahead. The Pharisees, also with the Sadducees, came, and tempting, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. Uh -huh. He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites! You can discern the face of the sky, but can you not discern the signs of the times? So they could tell by the weather or the way by the wind was blowing and the way the different clouds and everything were coming in, just like any good hunter or fisherman or whatever can tell. They could tell that different things were happening by the different signs of the skies and the weather and everything. And Jesus called them a hypocrite, said, you can discern all this by the sky. 
but you can't discern the signs of the times? In other words, what's happening right now in front of you? Go ahead, brother. Verse 4. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. So Jesus said, a wicked and adulterous generation is always seeking after a sign, but I'm not giving any sign unto anyone except for the sign of the prophet Jonah. And then he left and he departed. And we know that that's it. He had to be in the grave three days and three nights. Go ahead and continue, brother. And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Uh -huh. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. So now they forgot to bring bread when they went to the other side. And Jesus himself said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Now remember, Jesus always spoke and taught in parables. Go ahead, brother. Verse 7. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves, because ye have brought no bread? So now the disciples, they get to the other side, and they go, all right, who's got the bread? Peter, did you bring it? No, I thought John had it. What about James? Hey, Matthew, you got the bread? Oh, man, we didn't bring no bread. Jesus is talking about, we didn't bring no bread, man. <coughs> they don't understand what the Messiah is saying. And Jesus says, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves, because you have brought no bread? <coughs> I'm not talking about physical here. Go ahead and continue, brother. Verse 9. Do ye not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? Don't you understand what I can do? You've seen the miracles I could perform. You tripping over a loaf of bread? I can make bread. I feed, I've, I've fed five thousand before. Go ahead, brother. Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? Well, what about the time I fed the four thousand? And all the stuff that was remaining. Why are you tripping? Because you don't have a loaf of bread with you. Go ahead and continue. Verse 11. How is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Uh-huh. Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. So Jesus broke it down to them, and he said, it's not the, the bread, the physical bread I'm talking about. I'm talking about the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And it's the same thing today, sisters and brothers. You can judge a man by his fruits. There's Pharisees and there's Sadducees out there today, sisters and brothers. And Jesus said that unless our righteousness exceeds their righteousness, we don't have a chance at his kingdom. Go to Matthew, the 23rd chapter. And I did, uh, for the sake of people that have some of these uh, uh, handouts, I did make a few changes. This was one of them. I added Matthew 23. And I'll, I'll let you know as we go forward. Matthew 23. And let's pick it up at 23, brother. 23 and 23. Go ahead. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Then Jesus calling the religious elders of the day hypocrites. The religious elders of the day, he's calling them hypocrites. Why? Go ahead, brother. For ye pay the <coughs> tithe of mint and eggs and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. So it's not so much the stuff that comes from the heart they're taking care of. They're taking care of everything else. And Jesus explains that they love the chief seats at the, at the feast. And they love to stand with all their nice garments on, praying on the street corners and everything. They're puffed up and they need their egos. They need them fed. They need to have praise from men. That's the point that Jesus is making here. Go ahead and continue, brother. You blind guide which strain at a net and swallow a camel. Sound familiar? You blind guides that strain at a net. And swallow a camel. In other words, the little stuff that don't mean nothing. They want to make a big deal out of it and be right about everything. <clears throat> even if it's not absolute. We have Pharisees and we have Sadducees today, sisters and brothers. Not just by the definition of not believing in resurrection and all this. I'm talking about the spirit. The spirit behind the person. That spiritual wickedness from high places. Go ahead, brother. Woe well, unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Hypocrites. For you may, for you may clean the outside of the cup. And of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. What is an acceptable sacrifice unto God? The guarding of the heart in the secret places where nobody knows but you and him. And too often we forget. Sometimes we think we're the only ones that know. 
But God has those seven spirits run to and fro, and they report right back to him, and he knows every bit of your heart. That's why he said that the heart of man was only evil continually, because he does know our hearts. Go ahead, brother. Verse 26. Yes, sir. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. The first thing you got to do is cleanse that heart, sisters and brothers, and we dealt extensively with this the last time I taught. Go ahead, brothers. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones, and of all uncleanness. Uh -huh. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. So you appear righteous on the outside, but on the inside you're filthy. Just like a sepulcher, you go to the graveyard, it's real nice tombstone and everything, beautiful marble or whatever, nice and clean, shining. Oh, this guy died 70 years ago. Open up the grave. It's full of uncleanness, the Lord said. Dead man's bones rotting away. There's nothing good about that, but the sepulcher looks good. The headstone looks good. Oh, we look great. We're standing there. We're praying. Oh, praise God, brothers and sisters. Oh, praise Jesus. And on the inside, you're hating your brother. You're refusing to forgive. The weightier matters of the law, the things the Lord said to work on, the proving of the heart. Let's continue. Let's go to John, the sixth chapter. John, the sixth chapter. Gospel of John 6. So we have to beware of the leaven of the, of, the, of the Pharisees. We have to beware of this leaven, sisters and brothers. We have to constantly guard our hearts. Now we've come into the feast season. We've kept the Passover. We're in the feast. We're getting ready to praise him and worship him and glorify him and give him his just due. But we got to stay righteous too, sisters and brothers. We can't just go off now that we've cleaned ourselves up for the Passover and just let ourselves backslide. This is a constant 24-7, 365-day thing, so to speak. John 6 and pick it up at 44, brother, 6 and 44. Go ahead. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Look what Messiah is saying. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him. Do you realize that saints keeping the feast of unleavened bread, the understanding that you have, do you realize what you are called for? How many people we stand on a street corner busting their heads with this book and they can't even see something as simple as a seven-day Sabbath? And look at the understanding we have. We've been called by our Heavenly Father, sisters and brothers, to be righteous. To be righteous in the secret places so our light can shine everywhere. Tell us where you're at and continue, brother. 45. Yes, sir. It is written in the prophets. It is written in the prophets. And they shall be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Every man that hath learned of the Father cometh unto Christ, cometh unto Messiah. He's that prophet like unto Moses. It's his words that we are judged by. Whether or not we're obedient or whether or not we're disobedient. The words of our Messiah. Let's continue. Skip down to 63, brother, and read it. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. The spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. The Bible, God's written word. Obedience to his voice. Skip to 67 and continue, brother. Now, he, all these disciples, they went away. And he's going to ask the 12, all right, everyone else is tripping. What are you going to do? And look at what Peter tells him. 67, brother, go ahead. Then said Jesus unto the 12, will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Peter said, where are we going to go, Lord? You got the words of eternal life. Jesus says, if you do this at the appointed time, I will do that. I will gather you and you'll be mine. It's the words. So now we've got to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. In other words, we can't get all puffed up. We can't add or take away from the scriptures. We've covered this in depth over the past couple of weeks on how we're supposed to be walking leading up to this season, sisters and brothers. Everything is done according to the word of God. Let's go to John, the 12th chapter. Go ahead a few books. We're going to read one verse here, or a couple verses here. John 12, everything is done according to the word of God, regardless 
of personal consequences, sisters and brothers. That's how you stay right. That's how you stay righteous in God's sight. If it's in the book, you do it. doesn't matter what kind of uh, consequences come on you. If Jesus, in his book, in this book, in the Bible, if Jesus, the one that the Father gave it to, and I know I'm speaking English, I'm starting to confuse myself because I'm starting to go to the other names and add them in, and I'm not going to do that. If Jesus said do it in this book, that means that the Father said he wants it done that way. That's cut and dry. That's the bottom line. If it's in the book, you forget about your personal consequences. You take your lifestyle and you make it adhere to the word. Not take the word and make it adhere to your lifestyle. Everything hinges on the word. Everything. The whole law and the prophets is what our Messiah said. Everything hinges on his word. Nothing else. No adding. No taking away. And it's because of that we go to the law. And let's see what the law says about today. Let's go to Leviticus, the 23rd. Or wait a second. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Go back to John 12 and read 42 and 43, brother. 42 and 43. Go ahead. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. Why? For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. It's all about the word, sisters and brothers, and it's all about what Jesus said. The only ordinance that Jesus ever changed to the law was the ordinance of the Passover. And, of course, the change in the priesthood from that fleshly priesthood back to the priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. And the lamb. He's the lamb. He's the one that had to suffer and die one time for the sins of the world. No more animal sacrifices. That's the only thing that's changed. Everything stays hinged on his word. And many believed. Many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they didn't confess him that they should be put out of the class or the synagogue. For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. Sisters and brothers, this is a conditional God, and his conditions for your obedience is unconditional to your personal consequences. You get tossed out of the synagogue, so be it. You don't add, you don't take away, and everything's according to his word. Now, that's why we go to the law. Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, brother. Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23. And this is the time that we're in. This is the season we're in now, brother. And we're just going to go ahead and we're going to read it, starting at verse 1. Go ahead. 1 through 8. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, <coughs> Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, mm -hmm. even, even these are my feasts. Yes, sir. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, and holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. So the only Sabbath day that's not dictated by season is the seventh-day Sabbath. And that's the one that started at the foundation of the world. Go back to Genesis, the first chapter, start in verse 1, read through about... Ah, uh, 27, 28, read the whole chapter, you're almost there. And you'll read about the seven-day rotation started at the foundation of the world. Day 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Sabbath starts over. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Sabbath. The only thing that we have from paganism today is they threw names on day 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. But we understand what it is today. Now... We're going to address the feasts that come up in their seasons, or the Sabbaths that come up in their seasons. And we're going to deal with the first two. Go ahead, brother. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. So the rest of them get proclaimed in their seasons, but the seventh-day Sabbath is on the cycle that was created at the beginning of the world. Amen. Go ahead, brother. In the fourteenth day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. So the fourteenth day of the first month in the evening at sundown, is the Lord's Passover. And that's what we celebrated Friday evening. Go ahead, brother. And the 14th... Oh, sorry. Verse 6. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. So now unleavened bread, when, when the sun went down last night and the Sabbath and the Passover ended, that was the beginning of the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And also, I know some of you keep... This day today, which is the wave sheath day today, because Passover was what we know in man's eyes as Saturday, and we know the wave sheath is Sunday, and Joshua gave us the example of that in Joshua 5, 
where it was the same situation as it is for us this year. And they waved the sheaf, and then they went ahead and ate. So some people keep this wave sheaf day as a feast. Either way, you're going to gather together anyway. So we're all gathered together today. If you call it a feast, I can't read it's not. I can't read it is. It alludes in some places that it is. It is what it is. We're here, we're gathered together, and we're feasting. And we're here on the wave sheaf, and we're here on the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, right? Mm -hmm. In its season. Go ahead, brother. Verse 7. Yes, sir. In the first day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work. There. And this is this is the first day. We're having a holy convocation. We're not doing any work we're getting paid for. We're over there. We're cooking and, and, and we're prepping to eat. We're prepping to do what the Lord commands us. And, and we got a sister that's making off the chain unleavened bread. So we're eating fresh unleavened bread every day this feast. Go ahead, brother. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. In the seventh day is in holy convocation. You shall do no servile work. There. So you've got the first day is a high Sabbath and the seventh day is a high Sabbath. Let's go to 2 Timothy, the third chapter. Let's see why we always go to the law to clarify everything. 2 Timothy, the third chapter. Why do we always go to the law? Oh, you, you, uh, uh, man, well, I've been called a little bit of everything when it comes to keeping the law. 2 Timothy 3. 2 Timothy 3. It's never a good thing, though, when you come to keeping the law. Except in the guise of God. It seems like it's only in God's eyes is it a good thing to be obedient to Him. Everyone else has reasons why they shouldn't or reasons why they used to, but don't. And it's so silly. It's the simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ, sisters and brothers. If you're sitting somewhere and they're telling you you don't need to keep the law, run like your hair's on fire. Because that's not a place you need to be sitting. That's contrary to the Word of God. Here's why we need to go to the law. 2 Timothy 3 and verse 14, brother, 14 through 17. Go ahead. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, uh -huh. knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that, from a and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. That from a child, Timothy, you've known the Holy Scriptures, which are what? Go ahead. Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Through what? Through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. The scriptures are able to make you wise unto salvation because they teach you how to obey his voice. And he said, if you love him, keep his commandments. And we can go in depth, but that's way for another level. We really don't have enough time this rest of this weekend for that one. Go ahead and continue, brother. All scripture is given by inspiration All of God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. All scripture. And you know what? The New Testament to us, it's scripture, sisters and brothers. Go ahead. And it's profitable for doctrine, uh -huh. for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And these scriptures are profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. God's righteousness, not man's. Go ahead. That the man of God may be perfect. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. All good works. Let's get into the meat of this. How do we stay unleavened? Let's go to Colossians, the third chapter. Colossians, the third chapter. Colossians 3, brother. And I'm going to pick this up a little bit because we want to eat. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Colossians 3, verse 14. 3 and 14, go ahead. And above all these things, <coughs> put on charity. Which is the bond of perfect? What is love? It's the bond of perfectness. Charity's love. Above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfectness. And all the, the only thing God requires is us of us is to walk perfect before Him with a perfect heart. And charity's the bond of perfectness. Go ahead, brother. And let the peace of God rule in your heart. Uh huh. To to the body or to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Yes, sir. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and administering one, <coughs> one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And this is the spirit that the Lord wants us to serve him with, not just at this feast time, but at all times. This very spirit we're reading about here. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. We're going to read one verse. I didn't finish it. <coughs> go ahead and finish it. Verse 17, <coughs> and whatsoever you do in his word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Amen. Now let's go over to 1 Corinthians 13. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, sisters and brothers, I still got that tickle. 
from this little bit of a stomach virus or whatever has been going around. 1 Corinthians 13, 1 verse, brother, verse 13. Go ahead. And the same... Oh, wrong one. Oh, the second thing. Yeah, we'll wait. We go over a half hour, it's his fault. No. <laughs> First Corinthians 13 and 13. Go ahead, brother. And now abideth faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. Now abideth faith, hope, and charity. These three, but the greatest... Is charity. Read this whole chapter. This is deep. If it's not for love, you do it in vain, sisters and brothers. Let's see why. Let's go to 1 Peter, the fourth chapter. 1 Peter, the fourth chapter. 1 Peter 4. 1 Peter 4. <coughs> you should have got me a little honey before it came over. 1 Peter 4 and verse 7. 4 and 7. Go ahead. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober, and watch unto prayer. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober, and watch unto prayer. Watch unto prayer. Pray and always with all prayer and supplication for the saints. Walking in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit. Keeping yourself straight. Go ahead, brother. Verse 8. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity shall cover the multitude of sins. It says, have fervent charity among yourselves. Because charity covers a multitude of sins. Love covers sins, sisters and brothers. God's not just telling us to love each other even when we want to strangle each other because he wants to see how far we can go before we snap. He gave us this because it's good for us. Love covers a multitude of sins. This is the way we're supposed to be walking. 2 John, the first chapter. Go to 2 John, the first chapter. Nobody ever corrects me. There's only one chapter. Second John verse nine. Second John verse nine. Go ahead. Whosoever transgresseth, transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ. Now transgresseth means to break. In other words, what is sin? Transgression of the law, or the breaking of the commandments. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ. Go ahead. Hath not God. Hath not the Father. You don't have either one. Go ahead and continue, brother. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. This is a reason for us to praise him fervently. Some people will never have both the Father and the Son. Not in this flesh. Look at the understanding we've been blessed with. Jesus even told his disciples... Don't be praising it up and down and everything because that the spirits are subject unto you. But rather give praise and rejoice because your name's written in heaven. The righteous, it says, will scarcely be saved. Sisters and brothers, we're supposed to be walking not on eggshells, but with all sobriety. Looking every corner, everywhere around us. Shining that light into the darkness. Making sure there's nothing that's going to let us slip. Watching always with all prayer and supplications for all the saints. Watching and praying. Keeping ourselves straight. Guarding those hearts. Don't let these last couple of weeks lead into this Passover and this feast season. Don't let it be for nothing. Stay guarded. Keep your heart. Keep it with his word. Love fervently amongst each other. That's what being unleavened is all about. It's not about anything else but that. Having one mind in and through our Messiah. Being without sin to the best of our ability. That's what this feast is all about, sisters and brothers. So now we know right where we stand. We're as righteous as we could possibly be before God in our human wicked hearts. We've really taken a good look at ourselves. we put that mirror up. What's left now? It's the first day of unleavened bread. Well, let's break out the pom-poms. Let's go to Psalms, the ninth chapter. It's time to party, sisters and brothers. It's time to get our praise on. Let's go to Psalm, the ninth chapter. Psalm 9. The children all have their little gift packs. They can't wait, wait to get into it. We got praise music and stuff going in the kitchen, going at the church. We got food. We're eating now. Oh, you're talking about that physical food. Obviously, I should have known you were talking about that. But it's time to get it on now. We've done all the hard stuff. 
We did the easy stuff. We didn't do Easter and we didn't do the eggs in the yard and lie to our kids. We did the easy stuff and we did the hard stuff. We checked ourselves. We checked our hearts. We guard our hearts. We stand righteous and blameless before our Messiah to the very best of our ability in all places, in the open, in the secret, and in everything. We're not hiding nothing from our Father, not that we could. And now it's time to party. Psalm 9, read verse 1 and 2, brother. Psalm 9 and 1 and 2. Go ahead. I will <coughs> praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. With my whole heart, not half-heartedly. I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. Go ahead, brother. I will show forth all of thy marvelous works. Uh -huh. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise and praise to thy name, O thou most high. I'll be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praises to your name, O most high. Go to Psalm 149. Go all the way to the end of the book. Psalm 149. 149. And brother, pick it up at verse 1. 149 and verse 1. Go ahead. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Go ahead. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Yes, sir. And his praise in the congregation of the saints. And his praise in the congregation of saints. Are you a servant of the Most High God? Then you're a saint. Give it, get on with them praises. Let's go. Go ahead, brother. Let verse 3. Oh, no, verse 2. Okay, go ahead on 2 then. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Uh-huh. Let them praise his name in, in the dance. Let them sing praise unto him with the timbrel and harp. Sing praise his name in the dance. Sing praises unto him with the timbrel and with the harp, with musical instruments. Go ahead, brother. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will he will be beautify the meek with salvation. Uh-huh. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Go ahead. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Yes, sir. Go ahead, brother. Let the, let the high praises of God be in their mouth. And a two-edged sword in their hand. Now look at this. This is for the appointed time. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hands. Go ahead. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. That is the job of the saints. That's going to be our job one day. Sing praises to him for it. All the persecution and everything you're suffering now, one day if you keep your heart straight and you keep your soul straight and you're pleasing before God and you endure until the end, this is the job you've just inherited. You now live and reign with him. And that's what we're shooting for. Sing praises to him for that hope that's inside you. Go into Psalm 150 and pick it up at verse 1, brother. Go ahead. I didn't finish that. You didn't finish verse 7? I didn't finish 8 through 9. I'm sorry, I put an end to that earlier too. Uh, I wanted it to stop at 7. Go to verse 1 and continue, brother. I see that's what happens when you make changes at the end and you don't tell everybody. Go ahead and continue, brother. Praise you, the Lord. Uh-huh. Praise God in his sanctuary. Go ahead. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Yes, sir. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his, ex his excellent greatness. Yes, sir. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Uh huh. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high, upon the high sounding cymbals. Yes, sir. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Let's go to Numbers the sixth chapter, and then we've got one on the spot. Numbers six. Remember, sisters and brothers, you got to do this with the right spirit too. The Lord said he could have rocks raised up to be the children of Abraham. He don't need us. He was going to destroy everything, man, and just restart it all over again. How many times? He did it once with Noah. He told Moses, stand aside. I'm killing them all and starting a new nation with you. You think that God's going to trip over you falling to the side? Not once you've tasted this, this mighty freedom from our Messiah. Number six, and pick it up at verse 24, brother. Six and 24, go ahead. On the third day. Number six and 24, brother. Oh, I'm seven. That's all right. Back it up a book. Six and 24. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. Uh-huh. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. Yes, sir. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. This is what the Lord spake unto Moses to say, to tell Aaron, to tell the nation of Israel. We've taken hold of his covenant. Are we not now the nation of Israel? Yes, sir. The only nation that matters, spiritual, of all nations incorporated into one. 
Because even if you're physical, if you're not spiritual, Israel, if you're not keeping his commandments, it doesn't matter. You have no part in him. Last place, let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 5th chapter. 1 Corinthians, the 5th chapter. And we will end it here. 1 Corinthians 5. It started in verse 6, brother. 5 and 6. Go ahead. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. 5 and 6? Yeah. Oh, 1 Corinthians 5 and 6? Bible. What Bible you got? Second Corinthians. Oh, I was in 2 Corinthians. You got one of them, them new, new something Bibles that changed all the different uh, chapter numbers and everything. 1 Corinthians 5 and verse 6. Go ahead, bro. Your glorying is not good. Your glorying is not good. Go ahead. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Your pride is not good. Don't you know that a little sin leavens the whole lump, makes the whole thing sinful? One bad apple spoils a whole bunch, girl. Remember that song? One bad apple spoils a whole bunch. Little leavening leavens the whole lump. Your pride is not good. Go ahead, brother. Purge out there for the old living. Purge out there for the old sin. Take a good look at yourself and all that. We did all this. Go ahead, brother. That ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. That you may be a new lump without sin. Go ahead. As ye are unleavened. Uh -huh. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us, for the sins of the world. So we've done all this. We've checked ourselves. We're here at the feast, and what are we going to do? Verse 8, brother. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, uh -huh. neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. And that's exactly what we are going to do now. We are going to keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. We've worked hard to get to this point, sisters and brothers. We've checked ourselves. It's not, it's not a painless thing when you put that mirror up in front of you. We know that. We've done this. It hurts to do this, but it's necessary. Part of that chastisement that gets us ready to keep the feast. Because the only reason we do what we do, there's one reason. To be pleasing in our Father's sight. That's the only reason we do what we do. And that's the faith that we live in and the hope that we have. So, sisters and brothers, I thank you for the opportunity to rightly divide God's word. And I hope that somebody got something from this lesson. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, we're going to break from here, we'll post a lesson as soon as we can, and we're going to go party, we're going to go get it on, we're going to rejoice before our God. Happy feasting, everybody.